What if an AI agent could purchase data? That's what Coinbase's X402 standard does for the internet. We're going to dive into that and a little bit more in this episode of Unwrapped. We're all using these incredibly powerful AI assistants, right? You ask them to research a topic, write code, plan a trip, but they hit a wall the moment they need to pay for something. Let's say you're into trading and you ask your AI agent to pull a specific high quality data report that's behind the paywall. Or maybe it tries to use a premium API, which is really just a door that lets different pieces of software talk to each other. It just can't. It doesn't have a credit card. It can't sign up for a monthly subscription. It's an interesting digital divide. Our software is getting smarter, but still completely broken in certain areas. And this is a problem a new protocol called X402 is trying to solve. And the simplest way to think about it is like a vending machine for the internet. It's a way for one machine to pay another machine instantly for one specific thing and no sign up required. Welcome back to Unwrapped, your podcast series for DeFi, NFTs, on-chain culture, and all things in the BMX ecosystem. And just a quick but important reminder that none of this is financial advice. It's all for educational purposes. So why is enabling payments for AI even difficult in the first place? Well, it's kind of simple. The entire business model of the modern web was built for humans. Think about how you use an online service. Let's say you want to use a special AI image generator. Well, first you have to visit the website, you have to create an account, you have to agree to the terms, you pick a monthly plan, basic, pro, enterprise, you type in your credit card number, and then you finally get what's called an API key. And that key is, think of it like a secret password that proves you're a paying customer. That's it. But an autonomous AI agent it can't do that. It doesn't want a monthly plan for service it might only need once. And it can't securely store that API key that gets created for you. If that key is just sitting in its code and someone finds it, they've basically stolen your credit card for that one service. Agents need something totally different. They need to be able to just walk up to a service, ask how much, pay for it in that one instance, and get the data. And this is where X402 comes in. And honestly, the idea is so simple, it's kind of brilliant. For as long as the web has existed, we've had what are called HTTP status codes. These are just part of the basic language of the internet. And you've definitely seen a status code like 404 not found. It's basically the web server saying, sorry, but I just don't have the page you're asking for. And 404 is just one of many HTTP status codes used to allow your web browser to communicate with the internet. For decades, there's been a specific code, 402, that literally means payment required. But for 30 years, no one's ever used it. It was just this reserved idea or what if scenario until now. Coinbase designed X402 as an open protocol that finally standardizes that 402 status code. So here's how the vending machine works, step by step. First, your AI agent makes a request that says, hey server, can I have the data from this protected API, like a premium stock market feed that might cost money to access? The server just replies, no, but, it also sends back that 402 payment required status code. And in that message is a price tag. It says, you can't access it until you pay me one cent in USDC on the base network to this wallet address. And here's the magic. The agent software sees that 402 it received. It automatically builds the transaction behind the scenes. And yes, this is a real on-chain crypto payment. It signs it with its own wallet and retries the exact same request. But this time, it includes the proof of payment in the follow-up request it sends. The server gets the new request. It instantly verifies the on-chain payment and done. It sends a 200 OK back to the agent, which is a 
HTTP status code for success. And it hands over the data. That's it. It all happens in a single digital handshake. No accounts, no API keys, no subscriptions. Just a simple pay per request transaction between two machines. And this unlocks true micropayments for data. And that's why this is all happening now. This was just a dream a few years ago because network fees would have been way too high. But now with low fee networks like Base, paying a penny for a single piece of data is actually possible without the monthly payment subscriptions that we're used to. And this isn't a small problem. A friend of BMX DeFi, Justin Bebus, founder of the AI trading terminal Codex, he pointed this out recently and he said, right now, data companies are basically trying to force everyone through these big subscriptions or contracts, and it wastes billions of dollars per year. In AI alone, companies have wasted over 100 billion on these contracts in 2024. Justin also explained X402 and 8004 make everything pay as you go and permissionless. Permissionless access to AI models will allow intelligence and information to flow much more freely, which makes everything better. Okay, so that's X402. Our AI agent can now pay for things, but that leads to the next even bigger problem. How does your agent find other services? And more importantly, how does it know it can trust those services? If your AI agent needs a specialist agent to analyze, let's say, financial data, for example, how does it find one? And how does it know that agent isn't a scam? In the human world, we have things like Yelp or Google reviews for reputation, and machines need this too. And this is the second piece of the puzzle. It's a new proposed standard called ERC-8004, or trustless agents. And basically, it's the Yelp for the AI agent economy. If X402 is the vending machine's coin slot, ERC-8004 is the public map and review system that tells it where to find the best vending machines. It's an idea for building a set of on-chain registries basically a shared public database that agents can use to find and verify each other. And it's broken down into three parts. First part, identity. Think of this like an agent passport or ID card. It's a unique identifier that proves an agent is who it says it is. Second part, reputation. This is the Yelp part, a public record of its past jobs and performance history. The third part, validation. This is how other agents can vouch for an agent, saying, yes, we've used it, and it does what it claims. Now let's put these two pieces together. X402, the payment, and ERC8004, the trust. And suddenly you have the building blocks for a real open AI agent economy. Now let's go back to the AI research assistant again. And this time it needs to write a report on the Brazilian coffee bean harvest. First, it would use the ERC 8004 registry to find an agent that specializes in coffee bean harvests with a five star reputation. It finds one, it sends its request. I need the last 48 hours of pricing data for Brazilian coffee beans formatted as a spreadsheet. That specialist agent would reply with an HTTP 402, remember that status code for payment required, basically saying, I'm happy to get that for you. That'll be three cents in USDC over the base network. Your agent doesn't blink. It signs the on-chain payment, resends that request with the X402 proof of payment and done. The spreadsheet file is returned by the AI specialist. Your agent just hired and paid a specialist agent to do a job, all without any human intervention and all in a matter of seconds. And this is the whole vision. It's not just about payments. It's about creating a world where software can find, hire, trust, and 
pay other software all on the open internet. It's the plumbing. It's the checkout screen for a web that isn't just for humans anymore. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found this helpful. If you'd like more content, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, and check out the different playlists on our YouTube channel for deep dives, interviews with builders and leaders in the crypto industry, and more. Thanks again, and I'll catch you on the next one.